Praise the Lord, all my brothers and sisters. I'm going to wait for a few people to log in, but we're going to get straight into this word. Um, I've been waiting for about 25 days. God gave me a very uh, specific dream and another vision to compliment, uh, compliment that dream while I was on my Facebook, bam. And he told me this was the first message that he wanted me to give when I got back on live. Now, I've got this old Bible. It's my mother's Bible, and it's pretty torn up because she's read and studied these things. So I just want to let you guys know, you know, I have a Bible that's in better condition. But, man, I think this is just beautiful. All right. They often say uh, uh, someone who owns a Bible that is falling apart is usually owned by someone who isn't. Now, you see, I've got this uh, behind me. Now, this is something that God... Uh, gave uh, for me in a vision to show to you guys so I can paint a visual picture. First Timothy 4. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Check that out. In the latter times, in the last days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And then if you flip over to 2 Timothy 3, I'm going to read a little bit of this. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. All right. And I want you to go read that by yourself. All right. It says, and you can skip down. It says, for of these, there are the sort which creep in the house and lead captive silly women laden with sins, laid away with diverse lusts. All right. Now, I want you to read 2 Timothy 3 and uh, 1 Timothy 4 for yourself, but I'm going to dive into what God gave me. All right. Now, check this out. This separation line right here, you've got the church and you've got the world. You've got God's will and you've got your feelings. The problem with modern Christianity is we want to have one foot in the world, all right, and we want to have one foot in the church. And it does not work like that. There is a standard that God has called us to look to. That's why we have to run the race. None of us are going to be perfect, and that's why we have grace, because we all fall short of the standard of God. There's not one Christian that you're going to find that is perfect. There's not one Christian that you're going to find that has it all together. We all fall short and we need the grace of God. But nevertheless, we should be running after the standard and truth. Now, this is the problem. Because we want to have one foot in the world and one foot in the church, look what happens when I begin to do the splits. You see how my perspective is lowered and lowered the further that I split between the two. The Lord is calling in these last days for people to bring both foot in and say, I'm fully in. I'm not going to be hot or cold just going back and forth, right? I'm not going to be lukewarm in the middle. I'm fully in. Now, look what happens when you decide to take that one foot out of the world and fully come in the church. It brings up my perspective so I can get a revelation from God. Some of you are wondering, why don't I know what God wants for my life? Why don't I know what my purpose is? But the problem is you're too busy having one foot in the world and one foot in the church. And God is saying when you fully commit and when you fully surrender, then I will give you a revelation. Okay? But look, check this out. Right here is revelation and down here is deception. So if you've got one foot in the world and your stature is lower, you're never going to see the things that God has for you. It requires sacrifice. You're not always going to feel like taking your foot out of your feelings. You're not always going to feel like taking your foot out of the things of this world. Because you know what? Your flesh and your spirit is going to be at war. But if I'm down here messing around with deception, I can never get a revelation from God. Now check this out. This is the vision that the Lord gave me. You've got the prophet of the Bible in a biblical standard, and then you have prophet, right? You have the prophet, and then you have the prophet, the dollar signs. Why is it that everybody is claiming to be a prophet nowadays, right? But they don't prophesy about what's going on in this country. The only thing that they prophesy about is things.
things that are politically correct, things that are inspirational, and things that are motivational, but you see that nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere do you see the prophets of God going around just telling people, oh, you're going to get blessed with a husband, and you're going to get blessed with financial increase. The prophets, the men of God in the Bible would go and correct. They would go and rebuke. They would go and they would stand up to the kings. They would get involved in the politics and say what thus saith the Lord. But we have so many people caught up in the profit of money, and that's why they only prophesy to you things that are politically correct. And what the Lord began to show me in the vision, he said, everybody's running around with these titles, and they're staining it. So it was like, when I was in the, in, in the vision, I saw like all of these names on these white walls, and it was like God put something in my hand, and I was throwing it. It was splattering over the names. And what the Lord showed me is that all these people who are taking these titles, it's to the point now where they are so staining it, and it's a stench in God's nostrils. How dare you say that you are a prophet, you are a preacher, you are a spokesman for God when you have not been anointed, and you're playing with the things of God and making a mockery. But the problem is with modern Christianity, because our Christianity has gotten so lukewarm and watered down, we can't tell the difference between anointing and talent. We think because they sing good, they're anointed. We think because they speak well, they're anointed. So we can't tell the difference between anointing and talent. We can't tell the difference between a preacher and a talk show host. All right? A lot of these guys who are running around opening churches and calling themselves preachers are really nothing but talk show hosts. They're really nothing but motivational speakers who use the Bible, the Word of God, as source material. Let me use a scripture to motivate. You. But see, God is a God of balance, and that is what you have to understand. God will love you and rebuke you and correct you as well as bless you. See, if you've got a preacher who is loved by the world, that preacher is not God's preacher because the Bible specifically says that they will hate you for my namesake. So this is why it is frustrating in God's eyes that if I said in my word that they're going to hate you, why do we have so many Christians? Christians, celebrity Christians trying to befriend the world. They're trying to have one side in the world and one side in the church. This is why I have the heart in the middle. I have a heart right here in the center because a lot of believers' hearts are divided. They're not fully committed. They're not fully surrendered. See, there's a standard that God wants us to live to, but the enemy also has a standard that is way down here with excuses. Now check this out. I have love and truth over here. And I have lies and condemnation over here. The trick of the enemy is to get you under condemnation, get you under lies. And this is why the enemy always tries to get you to operate in your feelings and your emotions instead of faith. Just like there's a difference between the prophets in the Bible and the prophets that we have nowadays. All right. Just like there's a difference between um, the anointing and the talent. There is a difference between what the enemy has for you and what God has for you. But the enemy will often try to camouflage it to deceive you and make you think that you are in right standing with God. Make you you think that your feelings on our emotions are from God, but the truth is often your feelings and your emotions contradict what the word of God says. So faith says, right, forgive your enemies. Faith says, keep fighting. Faith says, keep worshiping. Faith says a lot of things in the scripture that call you to obedience, but your feelings say, ah, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to keep one foot in my feelings. And faith is calling you to surrender. Faith is calling you to sacrifice. Faith is calling you to overcome. But your feelings are saying, I just can't do it. I just don't feel strong enough. So faith is the opposite of fear. You have to choose what side that you're going to live on. See, many people are comfortable when, when you try to hold them to a standard. When you try to, I'll give you an example with Lauren Daigle, the video that I did on her. She went on the, uh, the little show and she sung a song and she had all of her chest fully exposed. I'm not talking about a little bit, all the way out. And because people are starstruck, because people are idol worshipers, they said, Marcus, who are you to judge? I'm not judging. It's not judgment to say what the judge meant. The Bible says that we should be modest. The Bible says don't cause your brothers to stumble. And this is the hypocrisy. See, 
A lot of Christians can't get the revelation of what a real man of God is saying is because they're too much in their flesh. So they get offended, even though the Bible says believers shouldn't be easily offended. And so they said, Marcus. They said, Marcus, who are you to judge her? Who are you to bash? And I said, I'm not judging and bashing by standing for the word of God. And that is the society we live in. If you stand for the standard, if you stand for righteousness, if you stand for holiness, they say that you're bashing. The Bible says for women to dress modest, but people are so deceived, right? What do we say in the beginning? Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. If I was preaching right now with some uh, gray sweatpants behind the pulpit and, and, and I had a bulge in the front and I don't, I don't know how to say it other way but to be real, people would say that was wrong. But it's okay for her to get out there and just have her stuff all hanging out. Do we pray for her? Yes. But see, this is the problem. The enemy will take somebody like that. See, we look at these Christian celebrities and we think because we see them up here. We automatically think that they're following the standard of God and that they have a relationship with God where they're walking in accordance with the word of God. But just because they're a Christian celebrity does not mean that they're meeting the standard of God. So what the enemy likes to do is to take certain individuals and put them in the spotlight and say, look, this is a Christian. And so we're all looking up at that individual and we're saying, well, if they dress like that, I can dress like that. If they talk like that, I can talk like that. If they act like that. I can act like that. And if a real man of God stands up and says, this is what the Lord says. This is the standard that is found in the word of God. They say, oh, you're being too harsh, preacher. Oh, who are you to judge, preacher? Even though the Bible says, judge with righteous judgment. And if you are judging, and see, this is the thing that blows my mind. I'm not judging you. All right. When you stand before the king of kings, he's going to judge you. Right. I'm like a police officer that is giving you a warning that say, no, they're not living according to the standard. Repent. The Bible says my people are destroyed for a what? Lack of knowledge. The Bible says to study to show yourself approved. But most Christians are not really studying like they should. Most Christians are not really fasting like they should. Most Christians are not really praying like they should. And that's why they don't get a revelation. And that's why when a real man of God comes with a revelation, they're all in their feelings. And I don't receive that. And I don't accept that. And you know what? God knows my relationship. My relationship isn't your relationship. But the problem with that, my friend, is if your relationship doesn't line up with the word of God, you don't have a real relationship because the Bible says in John chapter one, in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh. This word is God. So you have to line up with the standard. So now the great deception that we see all over America, people don't know the difference between a preacher and a talk show host. People don't want to follow the Bible. They want to follow their feelings. We've got all these people claiming to be prophets. And they, they prophesy all this nonsense, but they won't say anything about politics. And then Christians nowadays are really so confused, and especially in America, they say Christians shouldn't be involved in politics. Every real man of God in the Bible was involved in politics. Every prophet in the Bible was addressing the kings. Every prophet in the Bible was rebuking the children of Israel for the direction that the land was going. Every prophet in the Bible was warning them to repent. As a nation, I have to ask you, what are you walking in? Are you walking in the spirit of God and what the word of God says? Or are you work, walking in doubt and fear? Are you trying to have your cake and eat it too? I've got one foot in the church, but I've also got one foot in the world. Are you sitting there saying, I know what the Bible says. I know what the standard says, but I'd rather listen to my feelings. See, the oldest trick of the enemy is to get you to walk in my, uh, your feelings, my brothers and sisters. If he gets you to walk in feelings, it's easy for you to be, believe a lie. Why? Well, I, I, you know, Mark, I know what the Bible says, but I just feel like I need to get revenge. I just feel like I need to get some payback. I just feel, I feel, I feel. But what does the Bible say? What does the word of God say? Now, I'm not trying to be mean because, like I said, there's a standard that we all have to chase after, but we all fall short. And that's why we have the grace of God. No, no Christian 
Not Billy Graham, not Franklin Graham, not your mama, not your daddy, not your grandma. Nobody can say, I fully live to the standard. We all need some grace. But what I'm trying to get you to understand, the problem with most Christians in America is they have one foot in the world, right? And, and it's, you see it with these Christian rappers and all this kind of stuff. You know, please, please just accept me and, and just give my music a chance. And, and, and they claim to be going undercover, right, to, to, to win souls. That's what we're going to do. That you know. And what's so funny is they start off right, right? People got mad that I was talking about Dietrich Hagen and all this kind of stuff. They start off doing the right thing, but then you just see them becoming more and more like the world, right? They started off over here, and they say, you know, I'm just going to go over here, and, 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 and they don't realize they're compromising the standard of the word of God, and then they start dressing like the world, and then they're trying to come back and forth, back and forth in the world. And every time they go into the world, they come back a little bit more worldly, and then they try to bring the worldliness into what? The church. And so we've got so much of the world inside of the church that you can't even tell the difference anymore. And anybody who says, no, you need to get back on this side, we want to call them crazy. We want to call them hurt. And God's not like that. God's a God of love and he accepts me. Come as you are, but not stay as you are. The Bible says they have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. I come and I worship on Sunday to two songs and I get emotional, but then I'm in the world just doing my thing Monday through Friday. You know, I come to the church and, and I preach and I play the piano, but then I'm, I'm acting worldly and I can't forgive my enemies and, and I don't love my wife and I don't respect my husband and I don't do what the Bible says. I come to church and I show you this face and I'm so holy and I'm so righteous, but then I go in the world and I show them a completely different side of me. And so we've gotten comfortable in America just walking back and forth in between. And if anybody calls you out of your mess, then you want to get offended. But there's a standard. See, I'm not being mean. I'm not judging you. God is looking for somebody in these last days who's going to hold up the standard. God is looking for somebody who's going to say, look, brother, you need, to, you need to stop doing that dance. You need to stop. I'm in my flesh one minute. I'm in my spirit one minute. I'm in my feelings one minute. I'm over here prophesying the next minute. No, he's saying I'm, I'm looking for a people that will have a made up mind that I'm either in or I'm out. And see, we've lost the fear and respect of God where we just want to we want to play with them. We want to play. Oh, it's just okay. I'm going to do my thing over here and then I'm going to come worship. And it's all good, God. Or we spend all of our time over here, right, in the world, in our feelings, doing what we want. And then when we get in trouble being on this side, we want to rub the lamp like God is a genie. Oh, Lord, I need your help right now. Please help me. No. So. Where is your heart? The enemy wants you to live under lies and condemnation. Some of you watching this right now, you feel heavy, you feel dirty, you feel discouraged, but you have to ask yourself, I'm feeling these things, but the, the, what does the word of God say? The word of God says in Romans 8, nothing can separate me from the love of God. So maybe I'm over here and, and I just feel too dirty to, to, to try to get back in God's presence. I feel too ashamed to try to get back in his presence. I feel too heavy. To, I, 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 but you know what? The word of God says that I can boldly come to the throne of grace. Maybe I made some mistakes. Maybe I was over here playing around with the world. Maybe I didn't always get it right. But Brother Marcus told me that the word of God says, yes, there's a standard, but we all fall short of the glory. So I can always enter in through his grace. I can always come back home. I can always repent. I can always get back in his presence one more time. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, it's no secret that I talk about politics. It's no secret that I talk about controversial subjects. See, the world, they want you to live in this little box, right? They say, this is what a preacher is supposed to be. This is what a Christian is supposed to talk about. And if you step outside of that box, people get uncomfortable, people get offended, and people get mad. But see, it doesn't work like that. God is looking for somebody who's going to declare what thus saith the Lord, no matter what. God is looking for somebody who's not going to follow their feelings. They're going to follow the scripture and they're going to walk by faith and not by sight. Because check it out. What are you operating in? I'm operating in my feelings and that's why I'm under condemnation. That's why I'm under depression. That's why I'm defeated. That's why I don't have no joy. But if I start operating in faith, 
If I stop operating in my flesh and I start operating in my spirit, that's where the victory is. Now, I'm not making this video to beat anybody up or anything like that. The Bible says the truth will set you free. But you got to have a well-balanced diet. So many people out here just preaching certain things. They're picking and choosing like Christianity is a buffet line, right? That's why you have the prophet, dollar signs. He comes and he says, you know, let me prophesy to you. I see blessings. I see increase. I see business. I see, promote. you know, a real prophet, a real prophet is going to come tell you a prophecy and it should line up with something that God has already showed you. It should just be confirmation, but they're going to correct you too. If you see prophets out here and all they prophesy is good stuff. They're not a real prophet. If you see somebody claiming to be a prophet of God and they don't talk about anything that's going on in the world, they're not a real prophet. And, and well, Marcus, how can you say that? You're so arrogant. Where in the Bible do you see that? Where in the Bible do you see a prophet of God that, that, that did not address Israel, did not address the kingdom, did not address the mess with the people? Where did you see? You see, these guys are fortune tellers. Where did you see one prophet in the Bible just, oh, I just, I prophesy you're going to get a husband. And that's all they was talking about all the time. These people are fake and they're after your money. They want business friendly Jesus. We don't want business friendly Jesus. We want the real Jesus. See, this is why so many people are walking around in bondage, because we have these people who claim to be preachers and men of God and women of God, but one foot in the world, one foot in the church, not fully committed. God is saying, I'm looking for somebody who's going to be fully committed. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. The Bible says, and I end with this, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, right? What we like to do is we want to taste everything else. We're sitting here in the middle and say, let me, let, let me take a sip of, of, of lust and let me take a sip of doing it my way and let me take a sip of my feelings. And then we wonder why we have no victory in our life. And the Lord is saying, who's going to come and take a sip of my word, take a sip of my presence, take a sip of obedience, take a sip of being faithful. See, and when you put that inside of you, you're going to get different results. If I sit here drinking soda all day, eventually I'm going to pass out and I'm going to die. I need that water. But oh, I like the taste of soda. I like the taste of sin. I like the taste of following my feelings. I like the, I, I only listen to preachers who tell me what I want to hear. I only surround myself with people who agree with me. The Bible says there's safety in a multitude of counseling. And the Bible says those that God loves, he corrects. So if you have a man of God or a woman of God, they come into your life and they catch you over here, catch you red handed, just like this. And they say, hey, you need to get right, brother. You need to move it back over here. You need to move it back over here, sister. That's not a reason for you to get offended. Stop doing this. They correct you. Who are you to judge me? It's not judging you. I'm telling you to come back up under the standard of the word of God. Seek ye first the kingdom. I'm looking for a husband. I'm looking for a wife and I keep compromising. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of these things will be added unto you. The reason why some of us don't have the blessings that God has for us is because we're stooping low. We're not even trying to reach the standard, and that's why we're deceived. The, de the deception is down here. The revelation is up here. The destruction is down here. The blessing is up here. I set my eyes to the hills. I set my eyes to the cross. I set my eyes to the word. But when I set my eyes to my feelings, and I set my eyes to my desires, and I set my eyes to what I want and what I had in mind, I can't see what God has for me because I'm so busy down here messing it up. I'm down here messing with my idols. I'm down here doing it my way. And the Lord says, keep doing that. That is why only some, there's only a remnant that will ever get this revelation. That's why you're looking at some people and, oh, they just sound too deep. Oh, they're just doing too much. Oh, they're just too fired up. Oh, it just don't take all that. No, the problem is you're living way below the standard. And like I said, there's grace because we all fall short in some way. 
Don't think that everybody's going to be perfect. I'm not perfect. We all fall short. But there's a difference between I'm not even trying. I'm just making excuses for my compromise. I'm just making excuses for my lukewarm. I'm, I'm not even putting up my hands anymore to even try to fight, to even try to swing. I've just accepted that this is the way that it's going to be. I've let the enemy beat me down in the corner. I'm not even trying to fight anymore. I'm not even trying to step out no more. I'm not even trying to build anymore. This is just the way it's going to be. Now, the Lord is saying, look, I'm looking for somebody who's willing to fight, who's willing to walk in faith. No matter what, who's willing to keep on praising, to keep on worshiping, to keep on dancing, to keep on walking around them walls till it comes down. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for some real man and real woman of God. And let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters, with everything that's going on in this world, people get mad about the, thing, the things that I post. But if you research it, how long have I been saying a collision is coming? Since what, a year and a half? And these people are at the border and there's all these things happening all over the world and the politics and things like that. And people don't want to listen. They want to go, I want to go listen to somebody who's not talking about that stuff, Marcus Rogers. Just tell me that I'm anointed and just tell me that I'm spiritual and just tell me that God don't work like that. But let me tell you something. What the Lord is about to do is he's about to remove this line. All right. And there's going to come a time in America well, you're going to have to make a decision. See, the problem is a lot of Christians have got comfortable living with one foot in the world and one foot in the church, and nobody's confronted you about it. But there's coming a time very soon where people are going to come to you, and they're going to say, look, here's the line. Either you're going to bow down or you're not. Which side are you on? Just like they did to Peter. That hasn't really been coming in America because I can have one foot in the world and one foot in the church and just be kind of politically correct and kind of dance around these kind of questions like, you know, Andy Minio and those guys did. People, people get upset when I talk about that. Andy Minio, they say, oh, we're bold and we're unashamed for Jesus. And he got on Fox News with his little, little hat with the 116 scripture. And they asked him, they said, what does that mean? He's like, oh, it's just the, it's just the slogan of, of my crew. Because he was ashamed. We're bold and unashamed. When we get to the Christian concert and all these Christian kids come in and we're rapping about Jesus. But when I get on the red carpet, see, I can be a lion among the other lions, but can I be a lion among the wolves? I can say 116. I can say Jesus is good when I get to church. I can worship when I get to church. But what about on your job? They don't even know you're a Christian. They don't even know what side you stand on. And some of us were so busy trying to camouflage. One minute I'm in the church, the next minute I'm over here trying to fit in with the world. Which one is it going to be? Because let me tell you, there's a time coming. You mark my words. You said, why is Marcus always talking about politics? Because through politics, prophecy will be revealed and through legislation, persecution will come. They're going to say, what side are you standing on? And God is going to allow that to happen where they're going to move this line. See, a lot of Christians have been living in this little gray area, right? Their heart is divided. One foot in the world, one foot in the church. But God is going to allow the line to be removed, right? And you're going to have to say, this is who I am. This is where I stand. And that's what we're going to see. And when that line gets removed, my brothers and sisters... Mark my words, casual Christians will be casualties. Because if you've got one foot and you've been playing over here, it's not by your might, it's not by your strength, it's not by your power. So if you spend all your time feeding your flesh and you don't feed none of your time feeding your spirit, man, you're not going to have a leg to stand on when you go say, oh, give me, give me the chips so I can get groceries. Because you don't really believe Matthew 5. Where he says, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about what you eat. You don't really believe that. You just want to be a Christian. So just in case you die, I don't go to hell. That's why you get mad. You just talk to me about blessings. Don't talk to me about sacrifice. Don't talk to me about repentance. Don't talk to me about getting right. Because you're not fully committed. God is looking for some fully committed people. And now make no mistake. I'm not saying that you're saved by works. But the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And faith without works is dead. A tree is known by what? The fruit it bears. What kind of fruit are you bearing? What kind of fruit are you bearing? You, you, humble bubble shah, ba, ba, ba. You start speaking in tongues, but then you go home and you're being mean and, 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 and cussing people out and having a dirty attitude and no patience and no ability to love anyone. That's not the fruits of the spirit. 
We know what you're rooted in by your fruit. Always depressed, always defeated, always bitter. We know what you're rooted in by your fruit. So all these people getting mad. Look, when, when God corrects me, I rejoice because I say, thank, thank you. Big, mighty, holy God took his time to correct stupid on me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me from my mess. Thank you for not letting me stay on my path of destruction. But most Christians today, who I don't want to be correct. I, God understands my relationship. If your relationship doesn't line up with the word of God, you don't have a real relationship. You don't even know him. And that's why he's going to say, what's up, Brother Mike? I see you. That's why he's going to say in the last days, depart from me. I never knew. You. But Lord, Lord, I went to church and we sung two hill song songs. And, and, and I only missed one Sunday, but you know, and he's saying, but did you answer the calling that I had for your life? Did you chase after the standard that I had for your life? Did you spend your whole life just paying bills? Did you actually follow me? Did you actually pick up your cross and answer the call? No, because see, if, if you truly had a relationship with me the way that you say you do, you would have answered the call. If you truly had a relationship with me the way you say you do, you would have did more with your life than pay bills and work a nine to five. If you truly had a relationship with me, you would know that we were living in the last days and it would give you a sense of urgency. If you truly had a relationship with me, you wouldn't be ashamed at your job. People would know that you were a believer. If you truly had a relationship with me, you would do what my word says. If you truly had a relationship, you would be a Christian more than just Sunday. If you truly had a relationship, you would love your brother and your sister. If you truly had a relationship, you would seek me and seek my word. Instead of just saying, Lord, provide for me and Lord, protect for me. You would say, Lord, position me. Where do you want me to be? Where do you want me to stand? Where do you want me to work? Where do you want me to date? You would say, acknowledge him in all your ways and he would direct your path. If you truly had a relationship, but most of us, we don't have a relationship. We just carry the title Christian, but we don't acknowledge him. We don't let him lead our life. We just do whatever we feel, whenever we feel like it. No accountability, no direction, no correction, no nothing. You better wake up. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be harsh. But I, you guys know what I'm about and you know what I've been posting. And you're going to see in America pretty soon that there's going to be a time coming. And you're not going to run to those little preachers, those business friendly Jesus preachers. You're not going to run to those preachers who all they talked about was blessings and relationships. You're not going to run to them. You're going to run to that crazy guy who was yelling all those videos and say, man, Mark, what is going on? Because we're, we're what we're giving over to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. Everybody who says they're a Christian is not a Christian. You get that? Everybody who says they're a Christian is not a Christian, and it's not wrong for me to say you're not really a Christian. You're not really a prophet. You're not really a man of God. You're not really a woman of God. You're a devil in disguise. You're a wolf in sheep's clothing. There's nothing wrong with me saying that, but be careful. Be sure you're being led by the Spirit. But nowadays, the world will tell you, who are you to say they're not a Christian? Who are you to say he's not a real man of God? It's very bad out here. And the Lord has allowed it to be just like this. So you don't have a choice, but you have to walk by the spirit or you will be deceived. You have to. You can't walk by your feelings. God has, a, God has allowed things to happen in this world the way that he is. So it doesn't make sense to you. That's why people are calling good, evil and evil good. And the devil comes dressed as an angel of light. That's why people are so quick. You're all calling good things evil and something that's good evil. And I told you, I give you an example. And I know I'm about to lose about half of y'all. President Trump is the best thing for Christians right now. Not saying he's perfect, not saying he's a Christian, but you will see that the next guy they get into office is going to be some liberal person. I know you say, well, Trump's not good for Hispanics and Trump's not good for blacks. Okay, you're going to see people who put culture over kingdom. That's not a real man or woman of God.
The Bible says there's neither Jew nor Greek. We're all one and heirs to the promise under Abraham. You being a Christian comes before you being black. You being a Christian comes before you being white. You being a Christian comes before you being a plumber, comes before your job, comes before you being a Walmart worker, comes before you being a spouse. You being a Christian comes above everything else. And if you really walk like that and believe that, then God's going to take care of you. But the truth is a lot of people don't have faith. What is racism to God? What is prejudice to God when God opens doors that no man can shut? When God is your protector, when God is your provider? See, now, people, people, there's some people watching this, oh, that's not wise. We got to be aware. Yeah, you got to be aware, but be more aware of how big your God is. You understand what I'm saying? You guys are going to see everything that I'm saying. And it's so funny because when stuff happens, I prophesy about it year year out, year and a half out, even three years out. I told you about the Judge Kavanaugh thing in the Supreme Court, how that was going to affect Christians two, three years ago. I told you about this collision coming at the border and people still don't say, I don't remember you saying that. I go, look it up. It's there. I told them Donald Trump was going to be the president. Oh, you're crazy. I know what God showed me. And none of us are going to make it unless we have a real relationship with Jesus Christ. You better be fully committed. I love you guys. Hey, if this video blessed you, I know it was long, but feel free to share it. Somebody else out there needs it. We need real relationship with God and stop looking to all these people, all these, even me, everything that I said in this video, go pray about it. Go seek God about it. Go get in your word about it. Don't just take my word for it. Stop getting on uh, YouTube and listening to all these big preachers and not seeking God for yourself. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. John Gray, T.D. Jakes, Joyce Meyer, uh, Paul Washer, whoever it is you listen to, they can't save you. So you need to be working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I love you guys. Be encouraged in Jesus' name. If you didn't go watch the music video, Smell Like Heaven, it's on my timeline. Support me, guys, and share it. And be blessed and encouraged in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord.